was full tilt jungle madness. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the best movie fight scenes set in high schools, based on their intensity, iconic status, and all round rough and tumble nature. We'll only be looking at scenes that were set in a high school, not just film fights between teenagers of high school age. Also, a spoiler alert is now in effect. Let that be a lesson to you. Actions have consequences. Number 20. George McFly vs. Biff Tannen – Back to the Future When Marty's sent back in time to 1955, he has to make sure his parents George and Lorraine end up together at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. There's a slight complication in that Biff has his eye on Lorraine and she's into Marty. That Lorraine, she really likes you. She told me to tell you that she wants you to ask her to the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. Really? Oh yeah. All you gotta do is go over there and ask her. Despite all this, Marty comes up with a plan for George to rescue Lorraine on the night of the dance. When George arrives to save Lorraine, he finds Biff there, and she's actually in danger. Biff tells him to leave, but George stands his ground. No, Biff. You leave her alone. All right, McFly. You're asking for it, and now you're gonna get it. Biff easily has George pinned, but after a distraction from Lorraine, George is able to lay him out with one punch. Number 19. Luke Davenport vs. Rob MacArthur – First Kid Being the son of the president probably has its perks, but it can also bring unwanted attention. That's the issue facing Luke Davenport as he's picked on by classmate Rob MacArthur. Do you think you're better than everyone? Not everyone. You hear what he just said to me? After an exchange of insults during lunch, the two come face to face and are quickly surrounded by fellow students eager to see a fight. Luke throws a few punches, but they fail to connect. Rob hits Luke right in the mouth before the fight is broken up. Don't feel too bad for Luke, as throughout the film, he trains to be a better fighter, and when the two square up at a school dance, Luke is able to deliver a KO to Rob. Number 18. Mike O'Donnell vs. Stan – 17 Again After being transformed back into his 17-year-old self, Mike begins to learn more about his kids. He finds out that his son is being picked on by Stan, who also is the same guy who's dating his daughter Maggie. Is that the guy who tapes you to the toilet? Yeah. I yesterday shoved me in the washing machine in my own house. What was that jerk doing at your house? Mag it's Maggie's boyfriend. Maggie has a boyfriend? Understandably, this does not sit well with Mike as Stan is a jerk. In a class about sex ed, Stan makes a comment about how he's gonna get it on with Maggie over the weekend and Mike just loses it. He tackles Stan, but unfortunately for him, Stan quickly gets the upper hand and just wails on Mike. Now I got enough for the whole weekend. <laughs> The whole thing is filmed and it goes viral. It was a valiant effort, but Mike did not stand a chance. Number 17. Alien Teacher – The Faculty The teachers are being controlled by aliens at Harrington High School. Several students have noticed some peculiarities, but nothing definitive. Casey finds a weird creature in the grass and brings it to Mr. Furlong, who believes it to be some undiscovered parasite. Casey, I don't want to blow smoke up your butt here, but I think you found a new species. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, it could happen. New species are discovered every day. After a closer encounter with the infected faculty, Casey and others return to Mr. Furlong's classroom to retrieve the creature. It's gone. But Furlong soon shows up, and it's not long before he tries to infect them. But the students fight back. Sorry to impose and disrupt, Mr. Furlong, but if you kindly take your seats, this will be over quite quickly. Now sit down! Some of the CG doesn't hold up, but it's still freaky nonetheless to find out your teacher is an alien. Number 16. Schoolyard Brawl – Step Brothers Brennan and Dale are returning home after a series of unsuccessful job interviews. On their way back home, they come across a group of kids Dale's had trouble with previously. Look, Mr. Godaki, just leave me alone, will ya? Shut your mouth, S.A. You guys just go back and have fun on your jungle gym, okay? The kids swarm them and the two are beaten pretty badly. By the end of the film, Brennan and Dale have become successful and decide to pay a visit to their schoolyard adversaries. This time around, they proceed to absolutely wallop the kids even though they are vastly outnumbered. It's an outlandish, over-the-top sequence that you can't help laughing at the sheer ridiculousness of everything. Number 15. 
Ducky vs. Steph McKee, Pretty in Pink After he avoids her for several days, Andy is finally able to track down Blaine at school. She inquires about their prom plans, and he sheepishly says he had asked someone else to go but forgot about it. Just say it! I'm not lying. Tell me! What? Tell me! What do you want to hear? Just tell me! What? She accuses him of lying, and the real reason is he's ashamed to be seen with her. She leaves heartbroken. When Blaine leaves, he runs into Steph, who further disparages Andy. Witness to all this was Ducky, who reached his breaking point after Steph insulted Andy. Ducky tackles Steph to the ground, and a fight ensues. Yeah! It's broken up, and Ducky runs away, but we totally get where he's coming from. Number 14, Pre-Game Tussle, Bring It On The Rancho Carne Toro's football team does not have a stellar reputation. When they run onto the field for their home game against a rival school, there's barely a reaction from the crowd. Put your hands together for the Rancho Carne Toro! This is contrasted by the crowd's reaction when the Toro's cheerleading team is announced, where everyone goes wild. It makes sense, as the cheerleaders have won five cheerleading championships, while the football team can barely play. In fact, the opposing football team begins taunting the Toros, and a bench-clearing brawl ensues. Well, we're out here kicking your ass. Your cheer boys are over there, Ooh. scamming on all your squirrel. Which is cool, since you don't have dicks anyway! Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch! We don't see much of the action, but if the Toros fight like they play, we didn't miss much. Number 13, Harry Potter vs. Draco Malfoy, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince There have been some strange occurrences at Hogwarts, such as Katie Bell being cursed and Ron Weasley being poisoned. Draco Malfoy has been acting rather peculiar, and Harry suspects he may be involved with what happened to Katie and Ron. I've been trying to remember, honestly, but I just can't. Harry confronts Malfoy in the bathroom, and without a word, Malfoy starts sending out hexes Harry's way. The two boys duel, but no one is really able to land a hit until Harry uses a spell from his potions book that sends Malfoy to the ground. He's badly injured as a result, and luckily, Snape arrives to heal Malfoy. Number 12, The Locker Room Fight, Dangerous Minds Luann Johnson is struggling to connect with her students as they're from low-income backgrounds and don't see school as something valuable. Two of her students, Emilio and Raul, come across each other in the halls and have beef. It's your classes. Okay, it's all over. Mo! As tensions between them rise, Luann steps in to break things up and makes them swear there's no further animosity. After they leave, Angela tells Luann they're gonna fight anyway. Sure enough, in a locker room is a full-on brawl. It's a hectic scene as blows are exchanged until security arrives to intervene. Before being taken away, Luann asks Raul why he fought. He replies that if he didn't, he'd look weak and subject to attack himself. You promised! Yeah, but we had to. We couldn't walk around with our heads up no more. We got a reputation to protect. You a Marine, you understand? Like, if America didn't stand up, everyone would attack it. Well, in our neighborhood, if you don't stand up, you can't walk down the street because everyone will attack you. Number 11, Noah Sandborn versus Jason Zimmer, The Boy Next Door. Noah is new to town. He quickly becomes obsessed with next-door neighbor Claire and befriends her son Kevin as part of his manipulation tactics. Could be worse. If you didn't have a brother, you'd be working full-time. Noah Sandborn. Allie, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Friends with Kevin here. Now I'm gonna go look around. At school, Kevin is taunted by Jason Zimmer, and when Kevin talks back, it looks like a fight is about to break out between the two. Out of nowhere, Noah enters and clocks Jason and throws him to the ground. Jason's friends promptly ditch, and when the vice principal tries to break it up, she's shoved aside. This isn't so much a fight as it is a one-sided beatdown showing just how violent Noah can be. Number 10, Martin Blank versus Felix LaPoubelle, Gross Point Blank. When a cynical hitman returns to his hometown for a high school reunion, he tries to reconnect with people and places from his past. And who might you be? It is I, Sidney Feldman. Oh, been overseas? <laughs> A life of murder for hire is pretty hard to shake, though. At the reunion, Martin Blank explores the halls, and between the lockers is set upon by a rival hitman. Uh, 
the fight is fast and furious, the two contract killers both showing off their martial arts prowess. Hopefully, the school has never seen a rumble this serious before. Fortunately, Blank is prepared for class and can finish the impromptu assignment. Remember, kids, always bring a pen. Number 9. Jack Bronson vs. Travis, The Warrior's Gate I gave you the option. <laughs> you gave me the option. <laughs> Jack Bronson has it kind of rough. As if it isn't bad enough that he and his mom might lose their house, he's also got bullies to deal with between part-time jobs and school. Fortunately, after coming into possession of a magical artifact, he becomes a fighting expert in real life as well as video games. After surviving a magical quest in the United Kingdom, he returns home and is once more confronted by his bully, Travis. This time, he's ready. In no time at all, he puts Travis to the ground. Short and sweet though the scene may be, there's nothing quite like seeing a jerk put in his place and the little guy coming out on top. Don't touch me! I don't know. Number 8. Lee and Noah Flynn vs. Tuppen, The Kissing Booth Ninth grade skirt, eleventh grade body. Perfect. When Elle Evans returns to school accidentally wearing a too short skirt, she gets more than a few looks. One kid, Tuppen, decides to take it upon himself to be that guy and grab her butt. Elle is horrified, and Lee Flynn, her best friend, is justifiably outraged. How about I relax your face? Lee, it's fine, I got this! <laughs> I did not think that through. Vying hard for douche of the year on day one of school, Tuppen just smirks, setting Lee off. Raring to fight but outsized, Lee is backed up by older brother Noah, who jumps into the fray and proceeds to loosen some of Tuppen's teeth. Swift comeuppance is always so satisfying. Me? Now! Everyone, homeroom! Now! Douchebag! Number 7. Kevin Jones vs. Chiron Harris, Moonlight This is one high school fight scene on our list that's devastating rather than satisfying. Chiron has it hard enough trying to support his drug-addicted mother and avoiding bullies. The situation worsens when his main bully, Terrell, forces Chiron's friend Kevin to fight Chiron in order to prove himself. Kevin's betrayal carries an extra sting, since the two became physically intimate the night before. It's heartbreaking to watch Chiron take punch after punch, refusing to fight back as Kevin urges him to stay down. Stay down! Chiron does get his revenge against Terrell, but at a high cost, getting sent to Juvenile Hall. Hey, hey, hey. Number 6. Will Stronghold vs. Royal Pain, Sky High I only regret that this may be the finest supervillain speech ever given. And you don't even know what I'm saying. Will Stronghold's first fight against War and Peace is certainly memorable, helping to establish both characters. But it's Will's final showdown with the truly villainous Royal Pain that we had to go with here. After it's revealed that Gwen is the real Royal Pain, the two superpowered teens duke it out, Royal with her tech suit and Will with his super strength. Fun and exciting, flashing back and forth between the main conflict and the separate fights of his friends, the showdown unlocks a final surprise, both for Will and the audience. Royal Pain wasn't my mother. Royal Pain is me! Oh my god. Why can't this have been our school? Number 5. Ron Strickland vs. Andy Campbell, Fist Fight The nice thing about growing up is being able to put all your childish feuds behind you, getting older, wiser, and more mature. Unless you're these guys. After running afoul of the ill-tempered and unhinged Ron Strickland, Andy Campbell is challenged to an old-school after-school fight. After Campbell's desperate attempts to avoid the fight all fail, and because there are zero responsible authorities in this universe apparently, they finally throw down in a big way, with the whole school egging them on. See? Let that be a lesson to you. Actions have consequences. 
There's something endlessly entertaining about seeing teachers brawling like there's no tomorrow. Pass the popcorn. Yes! <laughs> Number four, Patrick versus Brad, the perks of being a wallflower. Oops, sorry, nothing. In this emotional coming of age story, Charlie makes friends with Sam and her stepbrother Patrick. At a party, he discovers that Patrick is in a secret relationship with Brad. Oh. Charlie. A popular athlete with a sadly homophobic and abusive father. Caught by his dad, but not ready to come out at school, Brad turns on Patrick in front of his friends. You gonna do anything? What are you talking about? I'm talking about your pet ape just tripped me. You gonna say something? While Patrick lands the first blow, it's not long before Brad's jock buddies are ganging up. The escalation and emotional climax of Charlie's intervention make this a scene that sticks with you long after the final hit. Number three, school brawl, Mean Girls. Katie Heron just wanted friends. After moving from Africa to Illinois, she befriends a couple of misfits before infiltrating the plastics, a clique of popular girls. I'll never tell Regina what you said. It'll be our little secret. After Katie takes Queen Bee Regina George's place, Regina decides that if she's going down, so is the whole hive. She releases all the details of their notorious burn book, a scrapbook of rumors, half-truths, and ugly lies, resulting in a school-wide brawl. Oh my god, that was one time! The scene is wild, hilarious, and chaotic, as the junior girls revert to jungle madness the moment their secrets are exposed and friendships tested. Number two, Jerry Mitchell versus Buddy Ravel, three o'clock high. We're gonna have a fight today, after school. Three o'clock in the parking lot. You try and run, I'm gonna track you down. After an unintentionally awkward encounter with a new and highly volatile student goes wrong, meek Jerry Mitchell is challenged to a fight after school. He does everything he can to get out of the fight, planting a switchblade, flirting with a teacher, even just running away. At last in the parking lot, he faces off against the incensed buddy. The lead up here is intense, only growing as others try to stop the fight. When Buddy finally pulls out a set of brass knuckles, the tension is palpable. Having avoided conflict all day, Jerry finally realizes that sometimes, the only thing to do with a bully is to stand up to him. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Peter Parker versus Flash Thompson, Spider-Man. Before he was a member of the Avengers taking on intergalactic menaces, he was just a nerdy kid learning about power and responsibility. With the help of his newfound Spidey senses, Peter is able to dodge and outmaneuver hothead Flash Thompson. pretty funny, don't you, freak? This iconic scene perfectly balances the idea of who Peter was with who he's about to become, as he surprises everyone, himself included, with superhuman speed, agility, and strength. <laughs> they tried to recapture the magic in the 2012 reboot, but like Flash's punches, it just didn't land in the same way. What's your favorite fight scene? Let us know in the comments. Just turn around, fly, and walk away. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.